So it is Saturday, uh, we are starting up the day assembling IKEA furniture, very very exciting stuff. We are assembling a cabinet that is going to go up against that wall behind me. I don't know how I feel about pushing furniture against the walls, but this room is fairly small, so there's not a lot of alternatives here. Um, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> I already went ahead and opened, well, cut these things. But yeah, let's do it. So, disclaimer, something happened. We are gonna start building the cabinet the that tall has cabinet. the tall cabinet. I mean, they are both the same height. But if you put legs on it, it would yeah. be taller. <laughs> that is the problem. So, my first mistake right off the bat is that I only ordered legs for half of the cabinets. So four legs. Yes, I needed eight legs. I I assume that if I added legs to the order, it would be for the whole cabinet. But no, it's only four legs, and. I don't think I can be bothered to go to IKEA to buy four legs, so we're gonna go yeah. ahead and, <laughs> and just go with it. Uh, hopefully it works. Okay, it's a different day. The cabinets are up. The room is slowly coming together. It is practically empty still. I need to go to the storage to unpack my books. Um, that got me thinking that the only thing that I have here with me to show you is the latest pile of books that I got. So this is an improvised book haul, <laughs> yay! <laughs> These books I got back in May with the idea that they will last me throughout the summer. And I have now read most of them, which is not so bad. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a lot to go through, so let's get started. Okay, the first book is Urban Aviary, written by Stick Moss and illustrated by Mark Martin. I got this book because I went through a bit of a watercolor phase last year and I really love Mark Martin's style and I wanted to study his style. I know that his wet on wet technique may look simple, but it is more difficult than it looks being able to control the technique to get the results that you want. And about the book itself, well, it's a very beautiful book. It is a guide on urban birds, so all the species that you can find living in these urban landscapes and how well they have adapted to living in the city. And even though by definition this is a coffee table book, which I don't know, I'm not really a fan of that term, I would say that this is a really good book in the sense that the author really manages to convey his love and appreciation for birds. Um, it will definitely spark your curiosity. Um, each species is accompanied by a little essay and some facts and some hints on how to spot these birds. So I would highly recommend it for any bird lovers out there. Okay, following in the same vein, we have the Urban Sketching Handbook by Stephanie Bauer. This little book collects different tips and tricks on best practices for sketching on the go. Um, even though it is mostly focused on urban settings and I am drawn to landscapes and nature more, I'm sure that most of her advice will apply regardless. I still struggle a lot with perspective and I probably forgot everything that I learned about color theory last year. So this is a book that I will definitely refer back to. I think I will probably go back to drawing once summer is over. Like just going through these two books already reminds me how much fun I had pretending I could draw. Okay, the next book is The Cat in the City by Nick Bradley. I have already talked about this book in my previous vlog, so if you haven't watched that, then go watch it. And the short version here is that I loved it. This is a collection of stories that take place in the city of Tokyo with a vast array of characters, each with their own struggles and hopes and dreams, but it was so beautiful to see everything coming together in the end. And I would say that these stories talk about 
the loneliness of living in a big city about forgiveness and relationship and so on. So I would definitely recommend this. Um, this is a work by a debut author, so I hope this is not the last thing that we see from him. The next one is His Master's Voice by Stanislav Lem. I'm not pronouncing that right, I'm sorry. But unfortunately, this was a bit of a fail for me. I read Solaris and I really enjoyed it three or four years ago. And I thought that I would love this as well because the synopsis is pretty similar to Solaris's premise. So we have first contact with an alien species and we have people trying to decipher a message. And overall it's like this science fiction story that is very philosophical in nature and that's something that I love reading about. But I don't know if it was the writing style, the translation, but I read the first chapter and I knew that it was a no-go for me. I get that the main character is supposed to be unlikable, but it was way too verbose and boring, <laughs> really. So maybe I will give it a try later on. But in the meantime, if you have any other recommendations by this same author, then I'm open to any suggestions. The next one is 50 Sounds by Polly Barton. This was such a joy to read. It's a non-fiction book, a memoir by translator and author Polly Barton. And it talks about the period of her life where she moved to Japan and she immersed herself in a new language and a new culture and how this came to shape her personality. And it's written in a very approachable manner but essentially it talks about the idea of how acquiring fluency in a new language and a new culture often also leads to the development of a new persona as well. And it was very refreshing to read another person's experience in the attachment that you may feel sometimes with the only identity that you have known when you grow up as a speaker of a single language. It was, yeah, it was very interesting. I think I will always have a soft spot for linguistics and translation, but even so, if you are curious about languages or if you have lived as an expat, I would highly recommend this book. Oh, actually, almost forgot, I wrote a review about this book, so I will leave the link in the description in case you wanna know more about it. Okay, the next one is Terminal Boredom by Izumi Suzuki. Again, I already talked about this book in my previous vlog, but I will say that this is a collection of short sci-fi stories. And as an interesting side note, I now realize that one or two of these stories were translated by Polly Barton, which is a funny coincidence. But anyway, these stories are all very dark and they have these overarching themes of isolation, apathy, and loneliness. Um, some of these stories do have an interesting premise and um, setting, but essentially they all left a uh, really bad aftertaste for me, so I didn't really click with this book. Okay, now for something completely different. This is How They Live by Gensaburo Yoshino. This is a middle grade book and I was curious about it because there is a new Ghibli movie in the works that is going to be inspired by this book. And essentially it's a very wholesome, uplifting, coming of age story about this Japanese schoolboy. So you get to read about his experiences through life and his perspective is interconnected with his uncle's teachings. And they touch on topics like regrets and what they teach you, how you should come up with the values that you should carry throughout life, what's your role in society and so on. I would say that what I found most interesting as well was the essay that it's at the end of the book that offers some context on why, basically why the author wrote an ethics book for young readers. Uh, yeah, I'm very interested to see how this will translate to the screen. Okay, the next one is The Penguin Book of Nora Smith by Kevin Crossley Holland. I got this book because I wanted to have a different take on Norse mythology after reading Neil Gaiman's Norse Smith. I haven't read this one yet. I've only gone through the introduction, which 
uh, deals with the historical context of the stories, the setting of the stories, that is where the, the realms where they take place, and finally the approach that the author has decided to take in retelling these stories in an enhanced manner while remaining true to the originals. And finally, we have this beast of a book. It's Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. This is the beautiful vintage Russian classics edition. I was at first a bit concerned about the font size, but it reads super comfortably and it's also a floppy hardback, kind of floppy hardback, which I like. I don't know if there's a lot that I can say about this book that is not widely known, but I wanted to read Russian classics ever since I read A Swim in a Pond in the Rain by George Saunders, which I cannot recommend highly enough. Um, I know that this is probably gonna be a challenging read for many reasons, one of them being that it's probably gonna be hard to keep track of so many different characters. But yeah, I'm curious and I want to give it a go. Some other people say that it's more approachable than it seems, so we'll see. Uh, I guess this is the end of this messy vlog. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please consider liking and subscribing for more content and see you in the next one. There were a couple of meltdowns because it's IKEA furniture and it's supposed to be easy. There was one piece that was marked with a big number one that I chose to... It said to... one! <laughs> one! One goes here! I chose to... Not care! <laughs> Not care! <laughs> and then we had to disassemble the thing. And it was only four pieces, four main pieces. One, two, three, four. Okay. And these two, top and bottom, were the ones. one of them has a one. So you have 50% chance of getting it right, just without even looking at the well, instructions. The odds were not in my favor. <laughs> and then you did look at the instructions, you were like, well, <laughs> it says one here, but I don't know why, so fuck it. <laughs>